Warriors also played Saturday night, and they cruised to an easy one against the Thunder. It was the second time they've seen this team in about a week. And we got to see the debut of Jonathan Kaminga. Came in in super garbage time, but he looks pretty good, man. He looked pretty good, right? He, you saw him already drawing double teams out of the split post catch. Made a couple nice passes, hit a three, airballed a couple threes, right? There were some nerves. But, you know, I'd, I think we're all going to want to see him play, maybe steal a couple of loonies minutes here and there and see what he looks like. But I, I'm not holding my breath when you, when you consider Kerr's history with young players. Josh Giddy continues to look very good for this Thunder team. Now that I've seen him about three or four times, I think the key for him is the pace. I think that the pace has to be quick and swift, and he has to stay moving. I just talked about Montrez Harrell keeping his feet moving defensively. Giddy, offensively, he's got to stay in movement because if he has to attack from a standstill, right, that's where he's 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 lacking. He doesn't have that pop or that type of burst, right? But if he's moving, then he can kind of change gears on you, use that size, get his shoulder on you, and you see his creativity. And so he's been impressive, man. I think that there is an element of surprise that's going on with Giddy right now where he's a tricky player, right? And no one knows his tricks yet. So we'll see how he adjusts uh, later in the season when there's more tape on him and teams and defenders kind of understand what he likes to do, what type of tricks he has. So yesterday morning, I finally go back to the DVR and get to watching Cade Cunningham's debut against Orlando, two of the youngest teams in the league. A lot of young talent, a lot of young talent, man. Um, but they kind of had Cade chilling in the corner. Like our fears from summer league were just because he wasn't on ball as much as you'd like. This Killian Hayes thing is looks like it's going to become a problem here. Like who exactly do they think Killian Hayes is going to be become, right? Because he can't get his shot off with that low release. He's not athletic enough to get to the spots he needs to in the paint to finish well. And so I, I, I just, I don't understand what they're doing, man. I don't really understand it. It's early and they're easing Cade back from the ankle injury, but, uh, the ball was, I, I don't see it. Here's what I do. If I was Detroit, I'd start a backcourt of Cade Cunningham and Josh Jackson, put the ball in Cade's hands. You got that jumbo backcourt because that's the one thing that Josh can do is he can guard multiple positions and he can attack from the weak side. Well, that's what he does as a slasher. You put the ball in Cade's hands and you feed Bay, Stewart, Grant. There's a lot of thirsty front court players on that team. And then Killian's the second unit guy. I don't know. They've got plenty of time to figure it out. But if they're going to have Cade as kind of like a secondary initiator and creator, I don't know about that. We're going to start hearing grumblings about that pretty soon. As for this young Magic team, the first thing that jumped out to me was, damn, Cole Anthony is small. Cole is small. What do they probably list him at 6'2"? And I've seen plenty of Cole Anthony. He just looked really small out there. He, he's narrow, and, and, but he plays hard. He plays hard, right? Him and Jalen Suggs in that backcourt. I like how aggressive they are defensively. And I, I, I really like, actually, kind of the roster construct, uh, where they're headed with Orlando. Because you got these two guards, undersized as they are. They get after it. And then you've got all this length and shooting in the front court. You saw the Wagner brothers go crazy. France, what you, France went nuts. He looks like a young Trevor Ariza out there. The way he's just efficiently popping the three and defending. Uh, Mo Bamba shoots the three. Wendell Carter shoots the three. So, uh, like, in theory, on paper, I like <clears throat> where Orlando's headed. Now, are they going to be good this year? Hell no, right? You know, like, they have the framework of being a good defensive team and you see where the shooting can come from, but they're just too inexperienced to be good right now, right? But um, for the first time in a while, I think Orlando fans can say, all right, I see the direction. I see what we're trying to do here. But it was late in the third quarter where uh, Detroit's bench took over because Detroit does have vets. Who was it? It was uh, Corey Joe, Kelly Olenek, and Josh Jackson came in and their vets pushed the lead out to double digits and never looked back. This Rockets team looks bad, man. Jalen Green, Jalen Green looks like he should be playing at UCLA or Kentucky right now, right? Because his shot selection and his body don't look ready. He's looked really bad. He's looked really bad. And, you know, he's going to get plenty of opportunity to get it together. If I'm a Rockets fan, I'm just concerned with the habits that they're going to form and the losing culture 
that looks like it's going to you know, is inevitable here with the way this is designed. There's some interesting players, though. You got DJ Augustine, Eric Gordon. There's a couple vets that I think are probably going to get poached off this roster. And then, of course, John Wall sitting there. I guess that that, you know, because, you know, one of my takeaways was was like, yo, Christian Wood is is not that good. Like if the Rockets are this bad, Christian Wood, because, you know, he's kind of a hyped player. He ain't that good, though. Like he can't like make them respectable. But I guess at the same time, I kind of forgot like John Wall, your max player is sitting on the bench. So that's probably not fair to say to Christian Wood, who's under a fair contract. 